My name is Daniel Meech. I am born and raised in a small country called Liechtenstein. Uh, Liechtenstein is between Switzerland and Austria in the heart of Europe. We are one of the smallest country in the world, so we only have 38,000 inhabitants. But despite the fact that we are small, we are internationally also well known for as a financial hub. Uh, I started my career in the trust and corporate services field in wealth planning. And at the later stage, I also did my uh, postgrad studies at the fidu in fiduciary management at the University in Liechtenstein. And I was previously sent over by my uh, employer to Hong Kong. That's how I also ended up in Hong Kong. And during that time, I also did my MBA at the University in Man uh, my MBA at the University in Manchester in Hong Kong. But I will share more about that at the later stage. And by being 16 years uh, with the same company, and then also with a short time with a, with a Chinese financial group, I decided at the beginning of 2020 to start my own company, which is called Blue Concept Asia Limited. As my name already tells you, um, it's an Eastern European name. So my, my parents and my, my late grandmother, they were actually, they are from Bosnia former Yugoslavia. So they immigrated in the 70s to Liechtenstein um, from a city in Bosnia called Banja Luka, which is a city of, I would say, 300, 400,000 people. So as a child, I also spent a lot of my time in Banja Luka, which was a city. And then going back to Liechtenstein, I always had to, to I always had to adjust and adopt to the to this small population and then also to the city life. So at the, at the age of, of 15, actually, I started my apprenticeship in Liechtenstein as a commercial clerk, which is, which is quite common in, in, in Switzerland or in, let's say in Europe to do apprenticeships as well. Um, and I did my apprenticeship with Hilti. So Hilti is, is the construction tool company and not many people actually know that Hilti is a Liechtenstein founded company. As I said, Liechtenstein has 38,000 people. Hilti itself at that time had 14,000 employees worldwide. So they were all over the places like US, Asia, whatever. So at the age of 15, I, I had the, 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 the chance to work for a multi-international corporation or multinational corporation. So I was back then already in touch with different departments from, from all over the world. So I was actually at a young age, my first experience, as you said, uh, with with uh, the worldwide uh, international business world. Uh, when I started, then, or when I finished my 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 uh, apprenticeship, I actually started with a with a trust company, biggest wealth planning group in Liechtenstein, and we only were dealing with international clients from all over the world. So at the beginning, I was dealing with the French-speaking clients. Then I moved on to the to the more, uh, let's say, Middle Eastern and, and Eastern European clients. And yeah, and then I, I, I moved in 2013 to Hong Kong because uh, I got handpicked by my previous employer. They had a, a Hong Kong operation here. They had also a Singapore operation. And they asked me if I would like to come to Hong Kong. And I always had the urge to 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 go abroad uh, because Liechtenstein was just simply too small for me. And uh, yeah, for personal development and career path, I've, uh, I've then chosen as well to 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 come to Hong Kong. The first time I came from Hong Kong, uh, to Hong Kong, never been to Asia before, by the way. I was, I I really was like fresh off the boat, and um, yeah, I mean. Despite the fact I knew the industry in and out, uh, I came to Hong Kong and I, I was put in a in a leading senior position. But the city was just, uh, uh, yeah, overwhelming, and 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 it's still like a city which 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 makes me happy, uh, despite the fact what's going on. And and yeah, I mean, it was for me. It took. I mean, they always say in Hong Kong, they ask you how long are you in Hong Kong. And the first one to two years, they call you a newbie. So that's very special, right? So it's like, oh, you're still a newbie. So after one year, there's like, oh, you passed the first newbie stage. After two years, ah, you're not a newbie anymore. 
and um, yeah, I, 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 I saw a lot of things in Hong Kong and it was quite impressive so far. That's, uh, I mean, still as you, as, you, as, you, as you can hear, I'm still trying to find the right words to describe that feeling. I, I've, I've been sent and handpicked by my previous company to come to Hong Kong to, to really reorganize the operation here. I was assigned for two years. I thought I'm come two years would be a good experience for me and go back home. But after one year, they already asked me, would you like to extend? And I saw the opportunity to grow in the career ladder, to grow as a businessman as well in Hong Kong. But despite the fact I knew I knew the industry in and out, there was nothing really I I I, I could not learn anymore, right? I mean, I, I gained knowledge by reading, I gained knowledge by practical experience, learn typically learning by doing. Um, but I, I felt the, the the inner the inner I don't know there was an inner voice telling me it was time for personal career development, and through through some academic routes and that was actually when i first started to look into 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 the mba programs before then i really then uh, went deeper to find the right suitable university for me yeah. first of all actually i i s spoke to one of my good friends one, one of my best friends here in hong kong uh, who actually did a, a, a mba so I was talking to him, asking him how did it help for your career development, uh, which kind of university did you pick? Because it was kind of all still a little bit new for me because uh, from Liechtenstein or, or, or let's say Switzerland, you know, you know, the Swiss universities like High Gaines and Gallen or the University in Zurich, those are universities, they, they are known to you. But suddenly being in, in a big city like Hong Kong and being really overwhelmed by all these uh, university programs you can actually attend here, which is which is purely luxury. Uh, I, I really had to, to first ask someone for advice who did it. And um, yeah, this is actually then the, 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 the first step, how I actually approached the, the MBA searching, uh, how can I say, uh, way to find the right university yeah. growing up as a football player uh, manchester was always uh, a topic for me obviously i have to say that I apologize <laughs> david beckham was was one of my idols so manchester was always known to me but uh no uh, jokes aside i mean it, it has something to do with the with the name recognition uh, where I come from, right? Um, so Liechtenstein and, and Switzerland, it's in the heart of Europe. We, we know all these educational programs. Um, and by being here in Hong Kong, actually, I was always looking for a university which could be kind of an educational bridge between Europe and Hong Kong. So in the fact that I will go one day back home, I mean, I'm still like, was thinking about that couple of years ago uh, I'm now eight years in Hong Kong but um, I always said to myself it has to be a, a university which is recognized also where I come from in a, in a sense that people understand the educational system and the UK educational system is worldwide highly respected well known internationally and we see it also here in in in, in hong kong or in asia uh the, the 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 first choices for studying is abroad in uk universities u.s universities canadian universities uh, australian universities and then they start to look into 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 the local universities which i find it's 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 as i said it's a luxury that we have such a big choice of, of, of great universities and programs here in the in town. The beauty out of, of the of this Manchester program here in, in Hong Kong is actually that that you had the flexibility and freedom really to to study and did not affect your work. That was number one for me. And and by choosing Manchester actually it also opened doors for and having a campus here on the ground which is also led by by this great team uh, led by by christina sue the regional director is actually that 
we have a campus in 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 the heart of of, of Asia, which also attracts students from China, from South Korea, from Japan, from Singapore, who also have their own center, by the way. But but people were taking advantage back pre-COVID time to really travel also to Hong Kong. And I, I mean, I must say, uh, I met I met people from 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 the UK, Norway, uh, Qatar, Singapore. Uh, one guy came from Canada to for one of the courses, the workshops. So it, it was a quite an international uh, uh, group, and this was actually uh, uh, something that which I always will keep in my mind. I, I was in a in a leading position. I had a team of of uh, we were a team of eleven, and I was leading uh, previously a lead of uh, the group of ten people. They were all under me. And and uh, I was doing a lot of business trips. I was uh, per year at least four to five times between Asia and Europe, Middle East. So it, it was a quite challenging time. But on the other hand, as I said, it was also important for me to have an MBA program, which allows me freedom and flexibility. But of course, some uh, uh, assignments were really close to each other. And um, then we had these great workshops, but they were also back to back. So let's say, for example, you have a marketing uh, workshop and the next day you have accounting uh, in, in business. So you're still like not digesting properly the marketing, for example, and then you went immediately into the next topic. So it was quite uh, challenging, but I love challenges. And, and this was actually... Uh, what I liked about it. I finished my university postgrad uh, university degree in 2010. Came in 2013 to Hong Kong. So you see there was a gap of three years already. Um, I was so busy with, with digesting everything that was happening around me in Hong Kong, which was already another university to me, you know, and that was like the, the the daily life university and um so I, I i literally i was like a sponge i was i was getting all information from from my team from the environment from hong kong as a jurisdiction and so on so th this was actually really really uh, uh, tough for me and at a certain point i just realized okay i i need really to develop also my career and i want to learn now and i I, don't, I cannot explain that to you. I just had this urge to go back to 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 university. I've been with my first employer. I oh know my first employer was the apprenticeship actually uh, that was Hilti, and then I've been with uh, my my first employer for sixteen years, the biggest wealth planning group out of Liechtenstein called First Advisory Group. And in June 2017, I left them because, as I said, Hong Kong was for me like a new, was a new chapter in my life. And I, I, I really sucked in all this information like a sponge. And, but I missed one crucial thing here in Hong Kong. The business or doing the business in China or having the experience really doing the business in China. And I had the great opportunity to join a, a Chinese multifamily office here in Hong Kong. They made me an offer to join them while I was still with, in the MBA. I mean, one of the rules back then was don't change jobs, don't, uh, don't get married, don't get uh, pregnant or don't become a dad, you know. Uh, and I did I did these things. I jumped out again, uh, going from Liechtenstein, uh, moving away from Liechtenstein was stepping out of my comfort zone. Leaving my employer was the second time of getting out of my comfort zone. And then going into China, that was completely a new a new chapter for me. So um, while being then one and a half years with them, I see how the the, the Chinese companies were dealing with with all these business matters, which was quite impressive. So quick, so. Yeah, I cannot explain that to you too much in detail now because we would have to have another interview for that. 
But um, yeah, these these companies come in quickly to the market and they pull out also very quickly. So at, at one week or two weeks before my graduation with the University of Manchester, I was unfortunately made redundant. Back then I, I thought it was unfortunately, but it was actually the best thing happened to me. Because after the graduation, I had time to really think about what what's my next step in my life. So I was back home. Uh, spending time with the family, digesting the MBA, digesting my my redundancy, digesting the the whole let's say six years being in in, in Hong Kong, and I wanted to understand what what do you re- what do you really want to do in your life? And I wrote down. I was reading a book, and I wrote down on one paper that was like, "What do you what do you see yourself in one year? Not in five years, not in ten years. What do you see yourself in one year?" So I wrote that down. Put it back in my book, and and yeah, one year later I was in Hong Kong still. But in in this particular time, actually, I started to 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 really say, okay, I I I try to apply for jobs, okay. Um, but you can imagine, I mean, my career path looks very successful, which is which it is. I'm very proud of it about my achievements. But as I always say, a coin always has two sides, and the thing is, being young, ambitious, uh, well-educated, holding senior positions already for a while, um, is also a disadvantage because I try to to apply for jobs where I actually knew they will never take me because I might be a threat to whomever in the company, right? Because and this is how it is, and that's reality. And and then I that was number one. Number two, actually, it was then yeah. I don't want to really work for anyone anymore, like report whatever. I just want to do whatever I want to do. So I remember I was sitting there for like two or three months, going back and forth between Hong Kong and 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 my home, Liechtenstein. And that was actually the time when also the protests hit Hong Kong. So I remember those days in, in end of October, I was sitting next to my dad watching CNN and he's like, oh my God, Hong Kong is burning. I'm like, no dad, just it's media and all these things, you know, it's, overrated a bit but it's serious but it's also overrated so don't always believe what's in the media. so and he's like yeah but what are you going to do i'm like dad i booked this morning my flight i'm going back next week and he's like oh you're going back to pack i'm like no dad i'm going back to start my new chapter came to hong kong and the good thing about was also that my visa expired in January 2020. So I had literally three times, uh, three months time to, to push it through. So set up the company, um, also move forward with the visa application, prove that I'm actually applicable to stay in Hong Kong and so on and so on. And uh, I, I never forget that day. It was the 31st of December uh, 2019, 9 p.m., I was waiting for my girlfriend that she gets ready for for the New Year's dinner. Uh, we had a friend's dinner, whatever, and I was super nervous the whole day. And she was like, "Yeah," I was like, "Oh, I didn't receive any any feedback from the immigration." And that day, I don't know why, I never checked my emails. And I checked that night my email, and I was like, "Oh, wow, I received my 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 visa." So my business visa was approved. So I'm like, "Wow, great," because I needed one more year to stay in Hong Kong to get my permanent residence. So that was actually. How, how how I started my entrepreneur journey. But this, definitely the whole MBA uh, journey helped me also to, to really take my time, not panic, put down all the pros and cons, look into the strategies. And and yeah, then I, then I set up the company and, and started this journey. And I was lucky that it was immediately approved. Uh, you asked me about about the name Blue Concept Asia, how that came up. Um, first of all, blue is one of my favorite colors, or is actually my favorite color. I think, find blue is very classy. Um, also, from from the rel- religious point of view, uh, I'm Christian Orthodox. Um, it's also blue stands for for trust and loyalty as well. Um, blue is like royal, marine, water, and all these things. And of course, it's then a connection immediately to what we learned also in the blue ocean, uh, blue ocean strategy. And um, then concept came actually from the 
point that uh, everybody these days likes to call themselves, oh, I'm a consultant, it's a consulting company, whatever. But then I sat down and I broke down the whole consulting um, word and, and it ended up that consulting actually starts that you consult based on an idea or a concept and the idea itself is the concept. So I was like, okay, I don't want to be the consulting company name. I want to be the concept company. And Asia definitely was was the link for me um, where I started my first journey as a as a as an entrepreneur uh, by coming from Europe, but also having my e- my roots in the Eastern Hemisphere, like Eastern Europe, and now ending up in in Far East. So Asia was back then also uh, uh, also uh, uh, known as as in the Middle East when they I think started the whole thing as one of the financial uh, hubs, and and this was actually kind of the connection I've seen in in Asia. Definitely where I am now, and yeah, let's see what the future brings us. Maybe there will be a blue concept Liechtenstein one day. I, I was quite experienced already with with certain business strategies before I started the MBA, and the MBA definitely helped me out to start understanding where these strategies decisions came from, and also be more confident to to challenge those 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 decisions and strategies and this helped me actually a lot to to really run the company in the way i want to run it uh, i don't want to be a super traditional company i don't want to be the super modern company i want to be kind of a mix in between and 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 using all these strategies I've learned. I would not particularly pick one thing out of the whole MBA, which made me, let's say, oh, to, I'm now, I attended accounting in business and now I understand accounting or attended the marketing and I understand marketing now. Now, I, I was lucky that I was working in, 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 in several positions previously. I mean, spending 16 years with a company, you see the whole development of a company changes, growing into a bigger wealth management group and so on. So I've seen all these transitions, which which most of the people maybe will never see in their career. And, and, and I got always something out of it. And that was also like from the MBA. I always got something out of it. And I would say that the whole package made it for me that I can today be more confident and more independent making my decisions for my business. What I definitely would would recommend to everyone, and this is what I already had uh, been talking to Christine as you, our regional director, uh, while we were setting up everything here is, is actually that I would recommend to everyone who's doing an MBA don't rush into any decisions after you graduate. Take your time, think about your next steps, digest and make the right decisions. And whatever decision you will take, it's always a good one. Don't hesitate to get out of your comfort zone. I did it three or four times and I'm the happiest person today. <laughs>